a team of more than 165 full-time marine specialists is employed to manage the various marine displays. Veterinarians, biologists, divers, laboratory managers and food technicians tend to this delicate ecosystem. As well as providing an educational experience, Dolphin Bay also serves as a marine mammal rescue and rehabilitation centre. A water-based theme park with more than two kilometres of river rides includes a water slide that takes riders through a shark-filled lagoon and a 700-metre private beach. For years, Dubai, one of seven semi-independent states that make up the United Arab Emirates, has been trying to build a more diversified economy and the building of skyscrapers and luxury hotels is an important part of this strategy. By 2010, Dubai aims to attract a staggering 10 million hotel visitors annually, up from about 7 million in 2007. Atlantis alone will increase the city's hotel capacity by 3%. So far, demand appears strong. Recently, the Middle East had the highest hotel occupancy rates in the world, with Dubai leading the region at around 85%. It's too early to say how the international economic downturn will affect the high end of the market. Gadget lovers flock to the recent Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. With a style-conscious gadget lover in mind, Giorgio Armani has joined forces with Samsung Electronics to design a mobile phone that is the size of a credit card. For those wanting to watch TV in bed, K2 debuted a motorised lift, which deploys a flat-screen TV up to 1.4 metres wide from under the bed. And a team of architects and designers has developed a house that promises to give visitors a glimpse of things to come. From smart mirrors to allergy-free bedrooms, they are all on show at the Living Tomorrow Project outside Brussels. Demonstrating the kitchen's features is Joachim de Vos, the Living Tomorrow technology manager. Many of the kitchen's gadgets are operated from a central control panel. A digital whiteboard linked to the internet automatically orders grocery items that are running low. Simply scanning items on the computer or writing them on the LCD will make them appear on the grocery list. The linked television gives visual confirmation of the order. The children's room contains a micro living space called the cocoon. Meanwhile, a living room of the future promises a complete entertainment centre in one device. A combination of fashion and lifestyle are evident in the concepts on display. Sony unveiled an audio device using a clear organic glass tube. The speaker system, Soundtina, delivers high quality sound from the one metre high glass tube that radiates evenly in all directions, with the sound at a consistent volume, no matter how near or far you are from it. Like everywhere else, young people in Japan are hooked on mobile technology. Calls, texting, picture taking, music and games are commonplace, but technology fans are always demanding more. That's why engineers at NTT Docomo, Japan's top mobile carrier, are experimenting with new ways to use mobile phones and other electronic devices. Researcher Hiroyuki Manabi can turn up the volume on a digital music player by rolling his eyes. And he jerks his eyes twice to the right to fast forward. The new technology may also enable mobile phone cameras to read barcodes and download music when the user simply looks at the codes. There was a technical difficulty in recognising the electric currents generated by horizontal and perpendicular eye movements. By using a special filter, we succeeded in articulating those signals from the weak electric currents of the eye movements.
The sensors are called electrooculograms, and chips embedded inside the headphone detect electrical activity associated with the movements of the eye of the wearer. The movements are tracked on computer graphic grids and lines displayed on a monitor connected to the headphone. Welcome NTT Docomo. The research team succeeded in reading the subtle electronic signals without placing the device directly over the eyes. Here the wearer is in complete control of the music selection purely via eye control. The NTT Docomo Frontier Technology Research Group exists to explore applications that may take as many as 20 years to find their way into domestic devices. The ability for your phone or other portable digital unit to understand what it is you are looking at will open a new means of device control. Dr. Fukumoto says he is always thinking about the wearable devices for the future that will blend into our everyday life. Making a device wearable, rather than something that has to be carried, is one of the keys in making a new device acceptable. He invented Ubiwa, a wearable mobile phone shaped like a ring, about the size of a ping pong ball. Another version of the technology appears in a wristwatch that can detect the wearer's thumb and forefinger tapping together to work as a remote controller, to turn on a light or control a DVD player. With the Ubiwa, any incoming calls are taken by placing your finger in your ear. Sound travels as vibrations through the bones and to the ears, where it is heard as a sound. All these interfaces remain in the developmental stage, and it is uncertain when or even if they will be incorporated into tomorrow's devices. But other developments are just starting to have an impact. Less and less music is being sold via recorded disc, and more is being bought online. It started with file swapping systems, then iTunes grabbed the market, and now phone companies are scrambling for a piece of the action. Nokia is launching a new feature called Comes With Music, aimed at making downloading music much easier. And HMV, one of Britain's longest established music outlets, is transforming its stores to be more compatible with today's trend for music downloading. As well as being available through the website, an in-store download service is being introduced, so people can still browse in the old-fashioned way, yet take delivery electronically. If you buy one of the Comes With Music phones, you automatically get a subscription to millions of downloadable tracks with unlimited access. Compare this to the current way of surfing the iTunes store, for example, then paying for and downloading tracks which you can't always keep forever. Nokia hopes to increase its share of the lucrative downloadable music market significantly. HMV's service is tailored for compatibility with the iPod that has around 85% of the market. In-store kiosks enable people to download any song they want. The Nokia 5800 Express Music Phone combines music and video features with access to social networks available via a touch interface. When combined with the Nokia Music Store and the Comes With Music service, consumers get access to millions of tracks for free. Although labels, artists and of course Nokia will get their return from the added charge in purchasing the phone. It is rumoured that Sony Ericsson will announce a similar scheme soon and the Comes With Music service will be launched in the United States shortly. This electric car is powered not by batteries, but by a fuel cell that combines hydrogen fuel with oxygen from the atmosphere to make electricity with the only emissions being water vapour. Nissan's made very good progress on the durability. Um, however, when it comes to cost, we're still looking for a few more breakthroughs.
The biggest challenges are the expense of the car, the limited life of the fuel cell and the limited availability of hydrogen. The fuel cell stack generates 90 kilowatts of power and has a range of 500 kilometers, but hydrogen is expensive to manufacture and difficult to store. At Birmingham University, five hydrogen-powered vehicles are being used in a study by the School of Chemical Engineering to find out more about the viability of hydrogen in transport applications. The university has also built the first fuel cell-powered canal boat. Professor Rex Harris from the University of Birmingham has spent his career researching the virtues of hydrogen. The boat is designed to demonstrate how hydrogen could make a major impact on commercial shipping, one of the world's biggest polluters. I think it is scalable. We know of one example uh, in Germany where they store a ton of hydrogen on, on, in a similar way to what we're doing. So it can be scaled up uh, clearly and I think it is a practical proposition. Hydrogen can be produced from natural gas reasonably efficiently. Though there is a CO2 byproduct, it is relatively simple to capture this greenhouse gas, but this practice is not widespread. Around the world, people are installing solar panels to cut down their output of CO2. But the introduction of this no emission technology is more symbolic in some places than in others. At a special press conference in Rome, Vatican officials announced the completion of a photovoltaic array on the Paul VI Hall. The solar panels will provide clean energy to the Vatican. It is one of the concrete and tangible initiatives with which the Vatican City State is promoting the protection of the environment, said a communique released by the Holy See Press Office. To minimise their aesthetic impact, the new roof panels are the same shape and almost the same colour as the cement panels that they replaced. According to project engineers, the panels will provide 300,000 kilowatt hours, which will be used to illuminate, heat or cool the complex. The solar panels were donated by the bond-based company Solar World. capital, Bogota, struggles with air pollution. An ageing transport fleet and loose emission regulations mean that the city is often shrouded in an industrial smog. The pollution takes its toll on the city's residents, with respiratory complaints exacerbated by the poor quality air. The story is common to cities across the world but a new level of environmental awareness is forcing governments to look at technological solutions. Now, electricity company CAM has launched the Reva, an Indian-designed car that is being built as an environmentally friendly vehicle which will help Colombians in the battle against global warming, polluted air and the rising price of gasoline. Colombia's environmental minister, Juan Lozano, helped launch the Riva in Bogota and personally drove the car to promote its use. He says that Colombia is moving towards a more environmentally friendly era. The Riva can drive 80 kilometres on a single charge, reaches a maximum speed of 80 kilometres an hour and can accommodate two adults and two minors or up to 230 kilograms. The Reva's battery can be plugged into any power source and is charged up to 80% in two and a half hours and up to 100% after eight hours. It has a capacity of 600 cycles of charge and discharge, needing to be replaced after three years. With gasoline prices hovering around $3.50 US per litre, Colombians who buy the electric car will save a fortune in running costs. The Reva is currently in use in the United Kingdom, Italy, Japan, Spain, Ireland, Norway, Chile and now Colombia.